Hey, hey, everybody, this is Mr. Perry, and uh, here we are taking a second look at the Peerless Fabio Twins, aka generic brand Super Mario Brothers uh, starter code. So, we've already covered how to uh, build the bit string uh, by coding on the stage and having it record every time we press a button. Um, and then we are also creating a history list of button presses. So now let's look at what's going on with our Mario. So what they give us at the start of this program is they give us, all right, when the uh, green flag is uh, clicked, we're gonna set the size for Mario to 400% point him so that he's facing 90 degrees and then set him in the middle of the stage. And then again, we're going to use a forever loop. So we're going to have this basically constantly checking and constantly running. And it says if something happens, then point in direction negative 90 and run. All right. So if we if he's going to run in this direction, then that would happen with the left arrow key. So I'm pushing the left arrow arrow key and you can see it's this first bit. So uh, for him to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, the operators and we're going to grab this uh, if blank equals something. And the way we're going to set this up is we're going to say check if the bit string equals and that was one zero 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 zero. All right, because the bit string looks like this when the left arrow is pressed. And uh, once it looks like that, then again, we're going to point in that direction. And then we're going to do this thing called run. All right, and then it says if blank, then jump. All right, so I would want him to jump if I'm pressing the up arrow. And the up arrow is, you can see up here, the up arrow is this uh, one, two, three, fourth bit right here. So again, I can just go up here, I can duplicate this bit string equals, and then just modify this to be zero, zero, one. I think that's correct, isn't it? Let's go back to here and just double check that. Yeah, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. So now it's saying if the bit string is equal to this, then go ahead and run that. So obviously, I would continue this process. Um, right here it says if something point in the direction 90 and then run. So that would be if the bit string equals 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then it says if something happens, then crouch. Well, I would crouch if I'm pressing down. So down is uh, this one right here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Then they also give us, all right, well, what do I want him to do if I'm hitting uh, A, which in this case is this bit string, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. All right, that's the A button. Um, and then the B button, uh, which is this last bit over here. So um, right now they just have him say uh, letter B and letter A uh, for 0.1 seconds. We're definitely going to change that because um, when we actually want them to do special things when we're pushing the buttons, you know, we can modify this and we can make this whatever we want. And then there's this other thing down here that says if something happens, then run something called uh, no op. And this one is actually going to be when you're coding a game, if you're pressing buttons, then you want your character to do stuff. But what happens if you're not pressing any buttons? What if you're you know, just basically standing still? Well, that's why this is on here. The uh, no op says just switch the costume to Fabio standing. So that would happen when the bit string actually at, uh, equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. All right, so this is, this is the thing that tells the computer to check you know, for when you're not actually pressing any buttons, what do you want them to do? Um, and essentially, we just want them to stand still and look like normal uh, Mario. Now, you'll notice that if I go up here,
you'll notice it says, all right, if the bit string equals this, which is again, when I'm pressing that left arrow, point in direction 90 and then run. So Scratch has uh, these special blocks that you can actually make. Um, you are allowed to make blocks. You can call them whatever you want to. Uh, just like with a variable, you can create a variable and then you can call it whatever you want to. There's this other powerful thing in computer science and coding called uh, procedures. And that's what we're doing here. Um, it is an example of abstraction. So for instance, um, when it says go ahead and do this thing called run, well here's where you define what run actually means. And what it says is move 10 steps and then uh, start switching costumes. So this basically is working a lot like um, when we talked about computer animation being kind of like a giant flip book and thinking about your screen as a giant flip book, what he's going to do is he's going to switch costumes. In fact, let's have a quick look at what his costumes are. The other nice thing about this program is they give you costumes. Um, so here is Fabio standing. This is when the bit string just equals zero. But when we want him to run, he's going to go to uh, costume two, and then he's going to start switching through these costumes. Here's three, and four, and five, and I think that's it. Yep. So in the run procedure, he's going to go from here to here to here to here. And if you do that fast enough, he's actually going to look like he's uh, running or walking or whatever. And then they also give you a costume for jumping. And then they also give you a costume for crouching. So costume jump is uh, number six and costume crouch is number seven. So again, this is all kind of nice because a lot of the work is done for us. So it says, you know, if you're going to run, um, if costume number is five, switch it to one and uh, then go to the next costume and basically um, do this every time you are pressing that button. It just kind of repeats doing this. And there's also this fancy little bit of math that we have right here. I'm going to go ahead and run this and we're going to make Fabio run now. When he gets to the edge, Remember that the center of the screen, your X position is zero when you're right here. Um, but the screen itself, the stage size itself, I should say, is uh, 240 pixels. And it says, if the absolute value of X position is greater than 239, then reset the X position to be zero minus the X position. So right here, my exposition is 230, and I'm approaching negative 239 or negative 240. So when I do that, notice what happens. He goes over there. Let's do that again. Run, 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 and then he reappears over here. So what's happening is the absolute value, when you get to negative 240, it resets it to 0 minus negative 240, which is actually positive 240. So this is what makes your Mario uh, sprite go from here way back to over here. All right, so he's now running for us to the left and he should jump for us too. Didn't I also have him do, yep. So here's the jump procedure. Let's look at uh, what that looks like. If we want him to jump right now, um, it says switch to uh, costume Mario jump and then uh, glide uh, 40 pixels up on the Y position and then back down uh, 40 pixels. So that's what's happening. Jeez, old pizza thing's being glitchy. That's what's happening right now when I press that up button. He goes up 40 and then down 40. All right. Now if we wanted to slow that down, we could uh, change the amount of seconds. Um, if we wanted to make him jump higher, uh, we could change this number uh, right here. So you know, here's where I mentioned you get to customize this and kind of make it your own. If we wanted him to jump uh, super tall, we could take that up to 100 and then have him come down by 100. Let's see what that looks like when we make that switch. All right, so that's kind of like a fast sort of high jump. Um, you could speed it up, you could slow it down. Again, you can kind of take control over what you want this to look like when it's all said and done. So really what your goal is for uh, this project is to uh, continue, all right, well, pointing in the direction 90, 
and run. So um, again, you've got to put, fill in the correct bit string there. And once that's there, this is already set for you. The run uh, procedure is already done. You've got to fill in the bit string for crouch. And then again, the crouch is already done. Uh, and then the no op is also done as well. But what your challenge is going to be is, well, what do you want Mario to do actually when you hit, um, you know, the A button or the B button? You know, what I recommend doing is uh, getting rid of these say blocks because, you know, that's kind of a lame move for him to actually say something. And then we're actually going to do two combo moves. So what you want to also do is just duplicate these last two if then statements and pop them in right here and then get rid of this uh, final um, if bit string equals zero 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 because we don't need that we only need that in there twice uh, and that's actually put this where it should be it should be right there I believe um, God, what a disaster look at this okay there we go so we're going to create uh, another if then block uh, to tell it to do something when we're hitting A, uh, do something else when we're hitting B, and then we're going to need to code two combo moves. And the combo moves are going to be again kind of like those special um, those special moves that we sometimes see in games. And again, this is going to be kind of entirely up to you. So all kinds of different things that you can make him do. You can make him tumble. You can make him fire fireballs. Uh, you can add all kinds of objects to this um, and again you'll find some games where they actually switch the backgrounds so again this is really kind of your time to get creative and to you know explore what's out there but also you know take control of it and uh, make it your own um, so this is you know like I say the overview of the uh, program the overview of the assignment uh, you'll have lots of time in class to work on it, and you can describe to me, uh, you can describe to me what you want to make happen, and we can figure out how to make it happen. Um, but you know, again, just be creative, have fun with it, and uh, understand the value of using these uh, procedures. Um, it's a way to kind of keep your code clean. Um, it is definitely an example of abstraction because you know, again, um, if you say go ahead and do this run thing, but run actually is a combination of many codes of block. We're taking something that is, you know, a large code, a large block of code, and we're treating it as if it's only a single line of code. So again, it, it abstracts a lot of this complexity and just kind of cleans up our main code quite a bit. All right, well, I think that's about all I need to get into with you guys here today. So um, again, explore and be creative and have fun and see what you can make happen.